Welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Albertus. I am the artistic director for Treehouse Youth Theatre um, and today we're going to to give you a little preview session of our, our playwriting program. It's a brand new program to Treehouse. Uh, Treehouse has been around since 1988 when it was founded by Richard O'Brien at the Red Deer College and it was part of a, a program there to sort of get youth interested in, and involved in, in theatre in the brand new at the time Art Center. Um, we've been around for, for, I think it's, if you do the math, about 32, 33 years. Um, and we, we specialize in teaching our participants the industry standard in theater performance, creation, and now in, in playwriting, so that we can better help those who are really interested in theater into making that step from youth theater to professional theater or theater schools. We are currently housed at the the uh, Red Deer Memorial Center with our partner Central Alberta Theater. We've been there, this is our third season now. And so this season we've introduced our playwriting program and it's being co-led by Mieko Ochi. So Mieko Ochi is an award-winning uh, Canadian playwright, director, dramaturg, actor, and the artistic director for Concrete Theater. I'll bring up her, her bio here on our website. So I'm gonna do a screen share. I think this will come up on the recording. I will share this. So this is our website. Uh, if you haven't checked out our website, www.treehouseyouththeater.ca, you'll get all of the information on what we're doing. Um, this is Miyako. She, as I had said, she is a, an actor, writer, dramaturg, director, uh, and as a playwright, her plays Red Priest, The Blue Light, The Dada Play, and They Say Blue, I Am For You, Consent, and Silver Arrow have been finalists for the four play series at the Old Vic in London. Um, I have had the opportunity to work with Miyako in the past. Um, a couple times as she was a playwright mentor for me when I was first starting out with, with writing plays at Red Deer College during the Scripts at Work Festival that Red Deer College put on. And then also at Red Deer College, I had an opportunity to act in her, the world debut of her play, The Dada Play. It was a really cool experience because I got to work with somebody who was developing a play and we were the first cast to put that play on its feet. And through that process, that was part of her playwriting process, she then took what we did and that helped her to adapt and adjust her, her play even more into the, the play that it is now. So we're really fortunate to have her as part of the playwriting program and uh, we're really excited. So we still do currently have openings at, in the, the, the playwriting program. So if anyone's interested in joining us, um, simply head over to treehouseyouththeater.ca and you can look up our registration information. And for participants who are only participating in the playwriting program, it's 450 bucks we, for the whole season. So it's from September to June, May. Um, we take December off because we're, we're busy this season with Romeo and Juliet. So a few of the actors um, from Romeo and Juliet are also part of the playwriting program. So we want to don't stress them out too much. Um, so we're going to take December off the playwriting program. We meet every other Thursday from six o'clock to eight o'clock. And the, the point of the program is just to help our participants through the playwriting process from beginning to uh, hopefully a finished product. Um, throughout the year, we'll have opportunity for people to workshop their plays with professional and community actors. You'll get one-on-one -on -one dramaturgy, which is coaching from the Echo, which is a huge, huge bonus for the, the program. And so she joins us once a month. Um, and part of what we're gonna be doing today is something that she showed us and showcased with us. So um, yeah, we're really excited to have her. And if you're interested, you can check out the website, you can email us, you can uh, go to our social media pages uh, on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. Uh, cool, so let's, uh, let's jump in and, and, and get started. We're, what we're going to do today is, is I'm gonna introduce you to uh, two of our participants in the, the playwriting program. And then we will start, we'll do an exercise. The, the, the point of the exercise is, is to help get creative juices flowing and to start that writing process. We're going to, I'm going to show the participants uh, uh, an image. They're going to write down a whole bunch of, of thoughts about that image. 
de detailing anything in there that they see and observe. And then from that, we're going to start to craft a play. And by the end of the just around an hour, we will have a, a play for you. Um, it might be a one page play, it might be a 10 page play. Uh, but it's again, it's an exercise to sort of get the, the process going. So I'll, I'll let each person uh, introduce themselves. So Ethan, I'll get you to unmute your your microphone and, and you'll jump into speaker view and, and you can introduce yourself. Just maybe tell everybody um, your history with Treehouse as well as why you're interested in playwriting. Um, so hi, my name's Ethan. Um, I have been with Treehouse For, for this is my sixth year is what I'm getting at. And the reason why I was interested in playwriting is that I, I am planning on going into theater. And so I want to have every advantage, want to be able to do everything I can within that. Awesome, thanks Ethan. And Nate, same thing. Uh, just introduce yourself and tell us, uh, you're really new to, to, to Treehouse. This is your first season. Um, you, both you and, and Ethan are gonna be in, in Romeo and Juliet. Um, maybe tell us why you're interested in playwriting. Uh, hi, I'm Nathaniel Baylor. I, I have no experience acting, not really any, but I, write. I really love writing and I decided playwriting is kind of a different outlook on that kind of writing and so I decided hey I'll try it. Like I'm trying to I'm trying to expand my horizons. Cool thanks Nate. So uh, that's, our, that, that's our, our, our small little team, our small but mighty team. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to guide the two of you through a process and we may get one page of, of play written or we may get multiple plays. And for anybody that's watching this, um, going with an image and um, using that as your starting point can often help with that process. Um, there's lots of different ways to, to get that creativity going and this is one method. And this is, um, I've used this uh, quite a bit. Uh, I'll, I'll take an image and I'll, I'll get a whole bunch of ideas. And, and what you'll hopefully see is that both Nate and Ethan are going to come up with a whole bunch of different um, ideas just based on one image. So I'm gonna share this image. So Nate and Ethan, if you can get a pen or a pencil and something to write with. I'm going to give you about two to three minutes um, of time to just write down as many things of this image that you see. So this is just an image that I, I grabbed from the internet, no copyright intended. So if, if somebody's watching this and they're like, that's my picture, um, no copyright intended with this one. Um, and we will just do some brainstorming. And don't take too, don't, Think too, too, too deeply. Just what do you see in this image? You guys can see it. Oh, you're writing down. So just write down what you see. And try not to use the top caption there to, to flavor your, your, your writing. Just what do you see in there? It can be literally what you see. It can be what you see maybe behind what you see, both in the background, but also like context wise, what do you see? And if anybody's watching this, feel free to also uh, write down your own thoughts and impressions of this. What are you looking at in this? And I think I'm on, oh, nobody, none of us are on speaker view, but I can see both Nate and Ethan and they are, are deeply focused on, on writing down what they, they see from this image. I think the saying is a, a photograph is worth a thousand words. We can at least get a thousand words out of this picture.
and it's it's in the eye of the beholder. Ethan is going to see something very different than Nate. And anybody who's watching this, you'll see something and observe something and, and things will have meaning to you that will be different than, the, than somebody else. I'll give you guys one more minute. And remember, you're not writing the story right now. You're just writing what you observe. What do you see in this picture? Okay, and pens up. Uh, I'm gonna stop you there. <laughs> Nate, I, you can't see Nate, but it, when I said pens up, Nate popped his, his, his arms up like it was a cooking show. So uh, let's start with you, Nate. Tell me what you saw in that picture. You gotta unmute yourself. He indicated I saw one a guy, a girl, waffle on a stick, watch, coat, train. In a, they're probably in a warehouse of some sort. The guy has a beard. They're dating for one year plus, possibly talking about common interests. I saw a lot more than that, but I didn't have time to write it down. <laughs> cool. Uh, Nate, back to you on this one. So what made you think it was dating for at least a year? What gave you that indication? They were evidently very comfortable with each other. They weren't wearing anything super fancy. They were in somewhere that wasn't very formal. Therefore, they're evidently not trying to very impress each other or anything. They're also eating food together. In my opinion, and that waffle. waffle. You said it's stick. waffle on a stick? That's what it and looks like. You said like. warehouse. Okay. Yes, I think they're in some sort of warehouse, possibly with like vendors set up with that. Okay. Yeah. Again, it's not what is actually in the picture that's important. It's what you're interpreting, what you see in that picture. Awesome. Thanks, Nate. Uh, okay. I'll get you to mute yourself. And, and Ethan, what did you see in that picture? So, um, first thing I saw, wrinkly eyed man, happy. Second, the, um, winter apparel. They were both decked out in full like winter garb. The woman had a tube. They both had jackets. Um, I would say the location, possibly, I, I kind of agree with Nate, possibly in some warehouse of some kind, so, some kind of winter festival, because there were streamers and lights coming down from the ceiling. And also the fact that they were both still wearing their, like, coats and such would imply to me that it's not, it's not a private party. Um, they, they were eating waffle dogs. Uh, the man had a silver watch. He had gelled hair, but he did not have gelled hair that was so, so straight, slicked back that it would need to be combed. His hair was a bit messy too. And the view was behind the counter, which is really interesting to me because to me it says, like, what, what we are seeing is not the story of these two people. It is the story of the person who sold them the Waffle Dogs and is now watching them on their date. Cool. Two very different interpretations. Um, Ethan focused very much on the hair. <laughs> um, cool. So um, now, did you pick out any similarities between the, the, the two? I'm gonna uh, bring up a, a Word document here and I'm gonna go through. So what were some similarities? So you both had uh, waffle. We both had the waffle box. dogs. Okay, and here you Nate. I think you can both put, go on unmute now because uh, we'll be in open conversation. Um, so you both said waffle dogs. What are some other similarities? Uh, the watch. Okay, the, both of you um, said the watch. The warehouse kind of idea, winter festival, warehouse. We warehouse, winter festival, yeah. 
like we, we, we also kind of a date. Both we of you also, set a date? Yeah. Okay. We also both kind of agreed on the fact that it was like not very formal. He said it wasn't very private of a party. It was just in general because we're being at the coats off. I see basically the same so thing. So more of a more of an in public thing as opposed to it's a private thing. Yeah, yeah kind of like Festival of the Tree of Trees. Like a festival? Okay, I'm gonna put in festival. What other similarities? Nate did not talk about the gentleman's hair. Nate, yeah. Uh we both kind of agreed that we saw a vendor stand or something. I didn't say oh. that. But I, get, I was thinking it. I didn't have time to write it down. You saw it. Yep. Cool. Uh, awesome. Uh, and anything else that you can you can think of from that that mm -hmm. image? I'm going to pop it up one more time just so that you can both look at it. So anything else in there that that slipped your 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 attention now that you have second viewing of it? The the are both well, they, they are both very well dressed. Yeah. I would say they look like models. Uh, what, what I would uh, originally, okay. I'm not sure now because the hair is kind of covering the corner of her eye. But originally when I saw the woman's eye, I noted that you can't really see the wrinkles and when someone's faking a smile, one of the things that they'll forget to do is wrinkle their eyes. So, so you think one of them's more genuine than the other? I, I'm saying one of them has a more yeah, yeah, genuine yeah. Yeah, like he's happy to be there, but the other one isn't quite so happy. It almost, to me, looks like she's kind of just yeah. I'm nodding along because I just want to. Keep going. So he could be happier to be there than she is. Yeah. Why do you think that is? I feel well, like it's the topic of conversation. Because from my perspective, it looks like they're looking at each other dead in the eye. And she... Hmm. I would say that they probably like organized a date in advance and though he thinks it's going great, she is either not interested in whatever he's talking about or doesn't like him for whatever reason. Maybe like they are like, they've been going out for a long time but she's realizing that they don't have very many common interests or something. Okay. Or it could be they a don't first... have as much don't have as much in common as, as they thought they did. Yeah. It was love at first sight, not at last sight. <laughs> and also the the point of view almost looks like someone tilting their head, like a student would put their head on their desk, kind of look uh, look along with the lesson because you can kind of see the corner, like the the corner of what I think is a counter, but it's uh, I might just be imagining it. It it's looks like it's tilted somewhat, which to me suggests the person who's looking at them has their head on the counter tilted. Could be like could be. a careless picture because the person isn't very interested in what's going on, because it isn't very mm, interesting. You can also tell it's still light out because in the background you yeah, can see like windows. Down, down and in that kind of corner, it's really r light and like lights kind of streaming into what we think is a warehouse. Um, what are their names? I feel like the guys got to be in Evan. That is yeah. an Evan face right there. That's what Evan. I was going to say, Evan. Okay. Looks like. And Evan. what's what's the woman's name? Melissa. 
Sound good? Whose story is this? Is this Evan's story or Melissa's story? Well, let's pick one. What's the conflict? Let's talk about Melissa's that. What's, story. Okay, what's the conflict between, is there conflict? Well, there ha yeah. if it's gonna be an engaging story, there's gotta be some sort of conflict there. Yes. And you don't have to think too, too, do, too deeply on this one. Um, I think the conflict, the conflict is be? she's not having, like she's not enjoying the time they're spending together. But Specifically, like what isn't she enjoying? His personality. <laughs> what about his personality does she not like? Enthusiastic. He's mm -hmm. too enthusiastic. Okay. He's too enthusiastic. What is he too enthusiastic about? Love. He's rushing into this relationship. He's holding. Okay. Back. So he is rushing in. He's too enthusiastic and about the relationship. And I want to say um, it's also possible that he's very much trying to put on a show for her because of the, I mean, again, the problem. So he's, or, he's, he's no. trying to impress her. But he keeps going about it in very poor ways like oh i'm going like dressing sharply is fine but it's a your festival he, okay. he looks he looks dressed for fashion not dressed for the weather like you think it's too hot there no, I think it's too cold there. Because well, he's, just... he's not even wearing any sort of toque. I don't wear a toque <laughs> at all often. I, use, I wear like a balaclava. So um, maybe he's trying a little bit too hard. He's trying. And through that, he's being disingenuous. Mm. Okay. Um, do you think that she likes the, the, the waffle on a, a stick? No, she hasn't even taken a bite of it. Well, he hasn't. I know neither of them like it. Neither of them like it, but it was the only thing to eat that there was there. Okay. All right. So the central conflict is that she is just not that into him. Yeah, she's just not that into him. Is this their first date? I know, Nate, you had said that it, it seemed to you like they had been um, in a relationship for at least a year. So Nate saw comfort, Ethan saw discomfort. Um, so Nate looked at that same photo and saw two people that were very comfortable with each other and were less formal. And Ethan saw two people that were not necessarily super comfortable with each other yet and were more formal. Um, <laughs> Which is fine, like both of you had different interpretations. So would you say that it is the first date or is this more of their, they, they've been in a relationship for a while and it's just not working? I think the way that they're dolled up, I want to say it's their first date because okay. both of their I outfits to... look very carefully selected. I want to say it's their last date. <laughs> it can be both. Can, can it be both? Yeah. <laughs> I, I'd still think it was, I'd still think it, it wasn't quite the first. They just look like they're too comfortable to be a first date. But reconsidering the photo, I wouldn't consider it a like year long relationship. So, it could be like a month or a week, but I don't, I just don't think it could be the first date. They'd so like be like the standing date. stiffly if it was a first date. So they've been on more than one date. 
Mm-hmm. Yes, in my opinion. Okay. They're just, they're just too comfortable in that. Okay. I'm just writing some of this down. So now when we look at this, whose story is this? Is this Melissa's story or is this Evan's story? This is Melissa's story. Yeah, this is Melissa's. Okay. So now us as a collective playwright, what is the message that we want to tell the audience? What do we want to get across to the audience? That you can't rush into a relationship. Okay. I would, hmm. my first thought was also something that reminds me of Shakespeare, like the to thine own self be true, because these people are both very well dressed and what we've established it, well, um, is it some of the Ethan, stuff is she's Ethan. not having a good time, but she's still smiling. She's still pretending to have a good time. And because of that, it's just still continuing. On first dates, you should be well dressed. <laughs> That's what you should happen on a first date or a first few dates. Um, so it's Melissa's story. We want to tell the story of what? We, what is the message that we want to get across to the audience? Do we want the audience to walk away? Do we want them to, uh, the lesson that we want them to learn or the, the reason that the story exists? What's, what's that lesson? Is it that um, present your, your, your true self? Is it don't rush into things? Things will happen when they happen. Don't try and rush it, otherwise it won't happen. Don't rush it. I would say live as you are. And yeah. Live as you are, not how somebody else wants you to be. Okay. Do you feel in that picture that that Evan is is trying to be something that he's not? Yes. Yeah, what, why do you like, think that? Well, if we've established it's a first couple of dates, mm-hmm. then I'd probably say that he's just trying too hard to impress her. He's not being himself. someone else that he thinks she would like. His face is very loud. It speaks to me as the person who has kept trying to crack jokes, saw the other person maybe look at a stand once and like, we're gonna go there. Ir- and irrelevant if the person is actually interested in it because that's just something they can latch on to. Okay. So, don't rush, live as you are, be your authentic self. It will be if it will be. Sometimes things aren't meant to be. Yeah. Is that Shakespeare? That sounds like Shakespeare. It does sound like Shakespeare. Yes, it does. Well, we've got Shakespeare on the brain because we are at the beginning of our rehearsal process for Romeo and Juliet. Um, Yeah, so that could be it. It could be that... um, Melissa just wants to take things slow in, in these dates. And, and Evan has this, this idea that he, he's, he's found his, his, uh, his partner for life. And he's, he's maybe has too many expectations uh, going in. And, and that's maybe not where uh, Melissa's at. So why do you think that they have those waffle, uh, waffle dogs? They were hungry. They're hungry. That's a logical reason. Um, In my opinion, actually, that's not what I actually think I was trying to make a joke there. (laughs) Nobody understood it. Um, Anyway, it's a quote from a book you wouldn't understand. There's just one guy in this one book I read. He always says, I'm hungry. It's just all he says, basically. So Anyway, like, like, no, Ethan would speak. I usually so what, what I'm betting is this is another tactic to impress her. Like, ah, 
look how relatable and comfortable we can be together. Yeah. Are waffle, are waffle cone or waffle dog type things relatable and comfortable? It's very casual. And you aren't usually casual with someone unless you are familiar and comfortable around them. Okay. So he's being too comfortable. Nate, do you think that the waffle thing is, is this comfortable thing or is it a, um, it's, it's a little too zany? I think that he's trying, I think that she asked him something uncomfortable and like she asked him something that he didn't really want to answer. He wasn't really sure how he should take it. So he's just like, oh, let's go get a waffle cone. Let's, let's go do that. I mean, not a waffle cone, a waffle ball. So he's using it as a distraction. Yeah. Distraction. Changing the subject. Changing the subject. So he's not being authentic. Or it could go the other way. Melissa might have done that when he asked, like, do you want to go steady or something? Because we've established he's rushing into it. He could have asked her something that she want she wanted to say no but she just couldn't hurt his feelings would be something like that so she's deflecting or she's changing the subject because she didn't want to but then she's not being her authentic self right well we never this... did say that she was being herself we just True. said that yeah, he maybe, wasn't maybe she's also not being her authentic self It, does does this have a uh, so if this is Melissa's story, does this have a, a happy ending for for Melissa, or is 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 it a sad ending for Melissa? Definitely sad. Sad. Okay. Yeah. Sweet. Okay. So Nate, why why do you say this would be a sad? This potentially could be a sad ending for her. Because if Melissa is like. Don't want to. I don't want to be in this relationship. And then he he's like, yeah, we're in this relationship and stuff. Yeah. Then she, when she finally goes like, okay, this is done. I don't want to do this anymore. Then he would be like, he'd be sad. And then she wouldn't have anybody to spend time with, so then she'd be sad. So she'd be sad because she doesn't have anyone to spend time with, or would she be sad because she feels sad that he's hurt? Both. Okay. You don't think she could find someone else to have to spend time with? Not by the time the closing credits roll. <laughs> <laughs> Where the curtain closes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. So let's, let's start writing some things. So again, this is just an exercise. Um, this process could take and should take quite a while. So developing a story should be something that takes much longer than 15 minutes of, of quick brainstorming. So again, this is an exercise to, to help us develop uh, an I idea um, and not that this is going to be our, our big giant play that we write and it's going to uh, win us Tony's. Um, it, it's our, our play as, as an exercise which is, that we're doing. Uh, Nate, you had... It took, me, it took me more than two days to brainstorm the first, the first like page of the book I wrote. It took me like two days to brainstorm like the first bit. Sure, and 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 who's the, the, the Game of Thrones author? Uh, um, how long has it taken him to write uh, the, yeah. the the latest book? Game right? of Thrones so, is books. Yeah, it was like films episodes. Well, it's a it's a TV series uh, that ended, but it ended before the the books were even completed. Um, yeah, so let's. I'm going to bring up the the document that I'm working on. And we can all uh, take a look. You can see the, the Google Doc that I have up. Yes. Yep. 
I see it. Okay, good. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, I just jotted down some of the things that, that we talked about and just gives us a, a, a loose idea of where we were kind of thinking about. Um, so when I, I am writing plays, I will, um, I, I use a very loose format for, for writing the plays and, and there's lots of different ways to format your, your plays, but here's, here's how I'm going to do mine. So with my stage direction, I will italicize it. So I would write where the, the scene place takes place. So I generally start with lights up. You can also start with curtain open, that sort of thing. Um, the rest, I don't put in a play a whole bunch of detail unless it's really, really, really important. So if a character, so for example, in our, our photo, um, Melissa's ring wearing a, a, a red toque. If that was something that was really, really important, I would, I would uh, indicate that in the script. But generally I like to, when I'm writing, writing plays, I like to leave as much up to the, the director and the designers as possible, um, unless it's something that's really, really specific. Nate, do you have a question? But then why when you wrote Romeo and Juliet, did you specifically put, he wears a red mask, he wears a um, When I adapted Romeo and Juliet, I would love to, to say that I wrote Romeo and Juliet. Um, but I, when I, in my when adaptation- When you wrote the, the adaption, I meant. That's right. Um, so in my adaptation, um, it's important for me that the, the, the Capulets have red masks and the Montagues have blue masks because there's a, a, a I identify with those those colors with those those families, uh, the Capulets and the Montagues. So I really wanted to indicate to the designer that yes, color is important for these characters. So if we had a reason why we wanted Melissa to have a, a, a red hat or the fair that this is taking place, if there was a specific detail, um, I think I talked about this a couple weeks ago, or when we were doing the pilot project for the, the, the playwriting program, which neither of you were involved in, um, there's the concept of Chekhov's gun. So Chekhov was a, a playwright um, many years ago um, who talked of the idea that everything should have a reason and a purpose. It either helps develop plot, so advances the plot along, it helps to uh, build character or uh, develop scenes uh, or, or settings. So you, you, you indicate something if it's really important. So Chekhov's gun, if you are going to mention that there's a gun on the mantle, at some point in the play, that should come into, um, there should be a reason for that to be there. It doesn't necessarily need to be that somebody has to, to pick up the gun and, and shoot it the gun has to either build the setting, so it has to help us understand the, the setting that we're in, it has to help us understand the characters, or it has to advance the plot. Uh, and sometimes it can be all three. And so when we're thinking of, of how to set the stage, we can, if we want it to take place in a fair, all we have to simply put is um, county fair during the daytime. Now, this is my way of doing it. Other playwrights may have a lot more detail. So again, when you're learning stuff from myself, when you're learning stuff from the Echo, it's a way of approaching things. We certainly encourage you to take more training, to take workshops, to write plays and get feedback on those plays because you're gonna, this is not the be all end all of, of writing. So county fair during the daytime. Any other details that you can think of that would be crucial in terms of the setting? Winter. Winter, okay, yeah, we can put winter in there. If that's very good something... show to the way they dress and stuff. Sure, yeah. Are about to dress in a thick winter coat and snow pants? And then it's, and so a, there's a, it's summer. So there's a couple ways that we can, we can describe things. So that we can indicate to, so if we feel that the, the, the winter clothing is important, um, we can indicate either that it takes place during the winter time and then the costume designer is going to know, okay, if it takes place in the winter time, it's gotta be, we should have these for costumes. Um, or we could just say county fair during the daytime and then describe the characters. Um, but I can put here uh, daytime during the during a winter in we'll say southern Alberta because they don't quite look like they should be in anywhere north of Calgary. Um, in southern Alberta. 
uh, I, I just want to take a quick sidebar. Um, oftentimes, we, I, I am I'm definitely an advocate for Canadian content. And so the more Canadian content we put out there, the uh, the, the, the better we are as, as, as Canadians, I feel. And so whenever possible, I try to set things in, in Canada. Um, but the, the, I mean, if you want to set it in the States, you do open yourself up to a larger market. Um, but yes, we'll, we'll put uh, during a, a winter, during winter in Southern Alberta. Okay. Um, I hope this is an interesting stream staring at, uh, or interesting video staring at our, our, our screen here, but that's okay. You'll hear our voices. It's almost like we're doing a podcast now. Um, so county fair during the daytime. Uh, during winter in Southern Alberta. We could probably refine that, but today's not about the grammar of everything. Okay, so what I tend to do is I'll capitalize uh, things when like a character name or something that's really important. So uh, Melissa and what did we, we call him? Evan. Evan. And Evan, enter. Now we don't have to describe what they're wearing because we've already indicated that it's taking place during winter in Southern Alberta. So somebody, the, the costume designer, the set designer, the light designer, the props design, and even the sound design, there's a whole bunch of stuff in that first line that's gonna give them a lot to work with. So the set designer is gonna see county fair. The light designer is going to see winter and daytime and also county fair. The sound designer is gonna see, okay, county fair, what kind of sounds would be taking place at a county fair? The props designer is going to think of what things can actors bring in and out. So we've given them a whole ton of information and the costume designer is going to say, well, if it's a county fair and it's taking place in Southern Alberta, what would they be, what would they potentially be wearing? We don't have to go into a whole ton of detail of um, Melissa is wearing a, a red fleece uh, coat unless, it's something that's really, really, really important. Like, uh, like say up. she always specifically wears that coat during the winter because it was her mother's heirloom and that's gonna affect the play somehow. Yes, exactly. So that's exactly it, Nate. So if it's something that's super, super important to the plot of the play, then we put it in there or the, the character, setting up the characters or the setting, then we would put those details. But otherwise we don't have to go into detail of like the fabric and the look of all of those sorts of things. Same thing with like hair. We don't have to go into detail about like, Melissa's has blonde hair that goes past her shoulder. We don't have to focus on those details. All we have to focus on is just the stuff that the, just the bare minimum. Does that make sense? Like, you couldn't do Romeo and Juliet without the house rivalry. Yeah, it would be a challenge to do the the, the show without having the rivalry between the, the two families, for sure. Um, you, 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 you wouldn't be able to, you, you'd have to mention that. Some, but that's not, wouldn't necessarily be mentioned in the, the stage directions of like, this family doesn't like this family. We want to do that through the, the telling of the, the, the tale. Uh, okay, so uh, Melissa and Evan enter. Uh, is there anyone else on stage? Is there anyone on stage when the lights come up? Evan. Not Evan, Nate. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got confused for a moment. Um, there is, there could be a hot dog, I mean, a, what are they called? Waffle dog vendor, like off to the corner. At his little stand. Okay. Um, I'm going to write down a waffle dog vendor is set up behind her stand. So again, that tells us if set design is going to look at that and say, okay, I need to have a waffle dog uh, stand. The, the costume people are going to have to determine, okay, what does a waffle dog vendor look like? What would they be wearing? Um, stuff like that. Props will have to get involved in there. So it tells us enough information. We don't have to describe the, the color of the waffle dog stand unless it's something that's really super important. Uh, okay, so then we've got Melissa and Evan enter. What happens next? Ethan. Oh. Oh, um, we'll go Ethan on this one. Uh, I actually 
to the people on the stage, um, I want to, I don't know if it's strictly necessary, but if, if there are other people on stage, just in the background, then it will reemphasize that they're in a public place. Yeah, we could do that. Um, um, certainly. Now, what are other ways to, to indicate that it's a, a crowded area? Nate. Music and lots of like shuffling noises and stuff. Yeah, it could be music and crowd noises. One of the things that we want to, I'm always cognizant of when I'm, I'm in the writing process is that I like to have, I'm going to pop it over to, uh, I'm going to stop sharing just so that we can be on the screen every once in a while. I should have been doing this before. Um, when I write, I like to have where I'm aware of budget as well. So the more actors that we have, the more we are going to have to spend. So the more we're gonna to have to spend on costumes, the more we're gonna to have to spend on actors if this is a professional theater show. So what's the minimum that we can get away with to, to tell the story? Now, sometimes you don't necessarily wanna limit your, your show or your play to the, to only small venue and small budgets. You might be writing the next Hamilton uh, and then your, your budget is, is basically um, whatever you decide it is. Um, but we want to make sure that we are, uh, we can tell this story. So we can kind of leave it up to the, the, the theater company. So here's, a, here's one way that we could, we could get around that and we could be creative with it. Um, so uh, a, we can simply write in a busy county fair. So now, as a director and as a designer, you can look at that and say, okay, I can actually, if we've got the budget, I can put a bunch of people on the stage and we might have a huge stage. Or if we don't have the budget for those actors, then we do that through shadows, we do that through sound, all that sort of thing. Music. And that works for both of your, your ideas. So we've, we've now created a busy square or busy county fair um, for Ethan uh, and we've used the, the, the sound, we could potentially use the sound. So now it's up to the, the production company. Okay, so now they enter. It's a busy county fair during the daytime during winter in Southern Alberta. Waffle Dog vendor is set up behind her stand. Melissa and Evan enter. Now what? Melissa says to herself, keep smiling, just keep smiling. <laughs> But, but, um, okay. But she's right beside Evan. How would that work? She is right beside Evan. Uh, my, 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 uh, my nitpicky part, or, or I, I'm not a fan of voiceover or asides. This mm -hmm. is me personally. So how can we, so I, I like your idea, Ethan. I'm going to throw something in there as a, as a way to get around a character telling the audience how they feel. Um, and it, it may not be successful, but I'm going to, I'm going to try it. So uh, let's do Evan. So Evan's character name is right over there. We can see Evan there. I did tab over a couple of times and Evan's going to say, having fun. Sure. Having is that fun kind Melissa. of, what's that? Having fun, Melissa. Because if he just says having fun in general, he's talking to the waffle dog vendor? That's true. Yeah, we could do that. Now, how often, another pet peeve of mine, how often in, in our, uh, I've, I've said both your names quite a bit, but how often in our actual lives do we say the name of the person that we're, we're talking to? Oh, yeah. Uh, Alberta, we're familiar not very with often. That. Not very For often. For me, it's all the time. <laughs> Well, I know for myself, I rarely say people's names. Once I'm really comfortable with them, I wouldn't just, if Ethan and I were, we, were... But we have established that Ethan, neither of them are really comfortable with each other. Probably. Okay. Well, let's put that in. Um, what, are having fun, Melissa? What we could do is, um, if it's... 
if we either make it Melissa beat having fun, question mark, or having fun beat Melissa, then Melissa becomes a way to like grab the person's attention. Because Maybe. I like I wouldn't normally say, oh, hey, insert name here, how are you doing today? But I might say, what? insert name what? here. Yeah, how are you doing today? Let's jump to the next line. Okay. So having fun, Melissa, what could she say? That would indicate that she's, what Ethan was trying to get her to communicate that she's just trying to, to smile and, and get through this date. Um, sure. yeah, like that, you do like, um, yeah. Um, yeah? Yeah, specifically, so um, yeah. So if she just says, yeah, then, then it could be actually enthusiastic. Okay, but she's pretty cold um, right off the bat yeah. with this one, so, um, yeah. Um, now what can Evan say in response? Or what if I add this in there? Why do you keep asking me that? Does that get just, across the point? Yes. Just, Evan could say like, just trying to make sure that I'm not, that I'm treating you right. Just trying to make okay. sure I'm treating you right. Or what do you think, Ethan? Yeah, something along the, that line would work. Or if we have him call out, uh, call her out on a behavior, like um, you, you just, or like you keep looking off into the distance. Or you keep you fumbling really with your distant. hands like you're nervous. Okay, so you... You haven't laughed at a single one of my jokes. <laughs> What about you keep checking your watch? Yeah. Right, does that kind of, even in those three lines there, I think it tells us a lot about them. So actor wise, now, another thing that I, I, I tend not to do in, in writing is you could do this. Melissa and Ethan enters. Sorry? Melissa, sorry, Melissa and Evan enter. Melissa, checks her watch. We could put that, or that simple section of dialogue tells the actor playing Melissa. Check her watch. Check your like watch, because check it, your watch. Evan is not going to say you keep checking your watch, She's not unless checking your watch. the actor is looking at her watch. You specifically so, say, like, you could say, Melissa checks her watch repeatedly, but that's just unnecessary. It's just adding unnecessary things because the actors are going to be often reading what's above. They're they going to be reading be. dialogue. Yeah, but they're Act, going to be yeah. reading the dialogue more. So it but won't drill. Also, okay. Sorry. No, that's fine. This gives us a lot. You keep checking your watch. So that means that she's checked it more. And we don't have to see her do it 10 times because we believe the characters unless they become untrustworthy especially when we just meet them it'd be weird if a character came on and told us that they were doing so, that another character was doing something when we just meet them unless they were purposely misleading the audience and so you keep checking your watch um and then if we follow it up with melissa saying something like um you keep checking your watch. It's just I getting do. a bit late. It's it's just an it's just a it's just a bad habit of mine. Okay, let's try that one. No, that wouldn't work because she's. But we how else? Yeah, we, be, because then the audience believes that it is a bad habit. Yeah. Maybe, maybe. But we also have her saying, "Um, yeah. Why do you keep asking me that?" which makes us believe that she's more enthusiastic, which could make us, lead us to believe that she is actually checking it because she doesn't want to be there. Or maybe it's just, or it's just a bad habit of mine, I guess. Okay. 
let's get let's get um, Evan trying to to salvage this this date. Um, nice weather we're having. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Nice weather we're having. Um, what can Melissa say to that? Sure. Yeah, sure. Um, we're we're going to be very obvious to to Evan here. What what if it's something like, I hate the cold. <laughs> yeah. I was born in the darkness. <laughs> Uh, poor Evan. This now, uh, now we're 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 kind of making Melissa out to not be that nice. <laughs> so we yeah, we know. could revise that. How um, about I'm cold? Um, let, yeah, we we we've we've made her not super likable. I think at this point. Um, I so mean, we, have we to could have a non-likable character. We could. Yes, we could. <laughs> Wait. We could also have her list off the other things she could be doing. So in order to make it so that it's not as, um, we'll, we'll do some revising here. We'll do some quick, quick re um, revising. And as you can see, how somebody responds tells you a whole lot about um, their, their character. character. So what if we put and changed it and, and we said, yes. Um, why do you keep asking me that? You keep checking your watch. I'm, um, I'm sorry. It's just a bad I, habit of mine, I guess. I didn't even realize I was doing that. That makes her seem a little bit nicer because I think we want her to be the person that we identify with. And so we've, we've, kind of made her a little bit cold in in this scenario and had we switched the character names it's not just uh if, if it was melissa saying having fun evan um the the character trait like her, the responses of of that the the way they were were making that character a little bit cold um so i'm sorry i didn't realize i was i was doing that um how can Evan advance things a little bit more towards the, the, the picture that we, we saw? You Thanks. look cold. Want to get some hot food? Okay. Um, we could also do, what's your favorite subject in school? I, I, you feel, I, what's your favorite subject in sport? They look more college age. Yeah, they do look what do you study? Age. What are you studying in college? Okay, it could be more about getting to know her, um, opening that up. Um, oh. How do we advance? So that's, that's establishing character, right? So when we do something in a play, we want to do one of three things. We want to establish character, we want to establish setting, or we want to establish plot. So that, Nate, would be a great example of establishing character because he could say uh, it that line of like what are you doing what are you studying in college that tells us a lot about those two characters it tells them that they don't quite know each other that well yet because if they had gone on six dates she probably would have told him what she has, does in college so that tells us about the characters it tells us that they're probably not like this they're just in that getting to know you phase so that advances character we could advance setting, so we could give them more for setting. So like, oh, isn't this a nice market? That sort of thing, or a nice fair, um, something along those lines. Or we could advance plot. So now just as an exercise, let's advance the plot. Okay. So we what could, have... could Evan or Melissa do to advance the plot along? Nate. Uh, we could have neither of them, and we could have the waffle dog vendor saying like, Get your waffle dogs here, nice hot waffle dogs or something. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna put vendor, get your waffle dogs here. Something about the phrase, nice hot waffle dogs is just endlessly entertaining to me. I know it is. 
whose idea is it to go for the waffle dog? I feel like it's Evan. Yeah, Evan. Want one? What does Melissa say? Mm -hmm. Sure. Sure, I guess. Sure. All right, so we'll go into italicized. Evan and Melissa walk over to the waffle dog stand. Who speaks next? Mm. What do you think, Evan? I mean, Ethan. <laughs> We've all done it now, so that's that's all fair. Uh, well, I'm I feel like that... since you said, what do you think, Evan? It now has to be Evan. Yeah, but what would he say? Because then we have exactly back and forth. We have Evan, Melissa, Evan, Melissa. Here, all day. Evan, Melissa, Evan. It's a like, direct pattern. Or what if it's simply... Can I get you? Yeah, what can I get you? So and then Melissa all have a extra 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 large. Why would she have an extra 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 large? I don't know. Because the longer she has food in her mouth, the longer she has an excuse not to talk. <laughs> we want to build her up. We want to build her up. I uh, I have a question about um the I'll stage. have a small direction um I'm sorry uh, sorry Ethan for the um so all of are like when they when Melissa and Evan enter uh in the stage directions you put them in all caps and then in the latter ones like is it because we've been now introduced to the characters that that's it's how I do it Okay. I, I'll, I'll do it when it's a new character introduced. Um, but again, there's lots of different formats um, for this uh, process. So I, I think we're, we're, we're almost out of our, our time here. So we will uh, have to leave this as an unfinished work. But um, I just want to chat a little bit because the, most of the video <laughs> will be just a, a screen with uh, words on it. So. Um, yeah, I just want to chat a little bit about the the the, the, the process that we went through. Um, again, we weren't. It, it was. It's an exercise to help develop that that creativity and and uh, that process. Oftentimes, playwrights will do that on their own. Um, we had three people that were were collaborating, and I think one of the takeaways is in the writing of of the play, you really want to be specific about who the characters are, what's their relationship with each other, and ultimately what they want. So what that journey is going to be for them. So are they, what type of story are we telling? What's the genre of the story? What are themes that are associated with these characters? So is this a, a story about love? Is this a story about triumph? Is this a story about letting go? Is this a story about finding oneself? Those sorts of things. And so, there's lots and lots and lots of, of, of ways that this, this picture that we, we did, lots of different directions that it can go. And, and we went a direction with it. And everybody brings their own perspective and, and past history and background. So the other thing that we talked about is dialogue and stage directions should advance the plot, the establish character. character. Or, or what was the other one, Nate? Uh, what's it called? Setting, established setting. setting. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So we should help, we should be at all times advancing the plot or establishing character or, or defining that setting. And you can do more than one at the same time. You could advance the plot while still expanding on character. But if you're finding yourself in your writing, getting bogged down in, in exposition as it's called so a character explaining the backstory you may want to try to figure out a way to write it in a way that 
you are telling that through the dialogue or the action as opposed to somebody kind of giving a monologue of, of that character. Um, yeah, so that's, that's our, our, our playwriting program and, and we'll, be, we'll be joined by Mieko uh, later this month or, or at the beginning of, of November. Um, so if anybody is interested in, in joining our, our playwriting program, again, treehouseyouththeater.ca. You can also find us on Facebook by searching Treehouse Youth Theater. You can find us on Instagram uh, the same way. And we would love to, to have new new participants and, and join us on the on our journey. We connect through Zoom every other Thursday. So you don't even have to leave the comfort of your own home. Um, you can stay nice and uh, snug in your house, especially when we, we start getting into the winter months. Um, thank you, Nate, for, for uh, participating in this. Thank you, Ethan, for participating in this. I appreciate it. I don't know if you want to give a, a, a send off to our hopefully gigantic audience uh, that's going to be watching this video, but it might be